Welcome to the ninth episode of our video tutorial series, where we delve deeper into the capabilities of the Crossroad Generator tool for Unreal Engine 5. In the previous episode, we introduced the latest features and improvements in version 1.2, focusing on performance enhancements and new customization options. Key updates include a utility widget tool for baking road infrastructure into static or nanite meshes, new road types, customization modules, and a performance mode to optimize editing process. In this episode, we will explore the customization possibilities of the Crossroad Generator. We'll demonstrate how you can easily customize road features like curbs, sidewalks or guardrails using the newly added customization modules. We'll walk you through all the settings available in these modules. We encourage you to watch this chapter and explore all these new features. Before we jump into the new customization modules, let's take a moment to understand how these modules work, which will help you better navigate the customization process. There are two general modules that you can use for customizing your road system. The first module is for distributing spline mesh components along the spline. This module is ideal for creating continuous elements like railings, guardrails, or curbs. It requires custom meshes suitable for the spline mesh component, typically consisting of three separate meshes, two end meshes and a middle section sweep profile, which is distributed between the two ends. To achieve the best results, all sections of the mesh should have the same vertex count at the edges to ensure smooth transitions between them. The second module is for distributing simple static meshes along the spline. This module is perfect for placing elements like street lighting, road signs, or concrete barriers. Meshes are distributed with adjustable spacing, and you can distribute multiple types of meshes on a single spline. The distribution can be random, sequential, or single type, depending on your project's requirements. Now that you have a better understanding of how these general modules function, let's take a look at the new customization modules added in version 1.2 of the Crossroad Generator. Let's start by dragging and dropping the road generator into the editor. To activate the customization modules, enable the customization option in the road generator settings. Initially, nothing will happen because the modules need to be provided with some meshes first. Navigate to the customization settings, where you'll see two modules you can work with. The first module is called Static Mesh at Spline, and the second Spline Mesh module is for creating spline mesh components like railings or guardrails. Let's begin by exploring the first module. By default, there is a single module added to the array, but you can add as many as you like to create complex custom roads. First, we need to add a custom mesh to the module. For demonstration purposes, let's turn on the road median and let's create some custom road lighting in the middle of the road. Go back to the customization settings, navigate to the static mesh array, and drag and drop a mesh. You can use the preloaded meshes provided in the crossroad generator, which you'll find in the custom modules folder within the mesh folder. Let's assign a street lamp to the static mesh array. As you can see, the street lamps are evenly distributed along the spline. In the module settings, you can choose from different types of distribution methods. This is particularly useful if you want to distribute multiple variations of the same mesh or create a specific look with different meshes. If you opt for single distribution and have assigned multiple elements in the array, you can switch between the meshes by selecting the variation type. The spacing parameter controls the distance between distributed meshes. The start offset parameter allows you to offset the static meshes from the starting spline point. You also have multiple transformation options available to help you better distribute the meshes along the spline. 
you can use the global offset parameter to translate all meshes globally along the X, Y, and Z axes. We encourage you to experiment with these settings to familiarize yourself with all the options available to you. In addition to offset and rotation parameters you can use the look vertical slope parameter to fix the vertical position on a sloped road if necessary. Another useful option is override material, which allows you to easily assign your custom materials to the mesh. The last three options are related to optimization, you can toggle shadows and collisions on or off and set the culling distance for your mesh. You can easily turn on or off all the modules added to the array by toggling that static mesh and spline option in the customization settings. Now, let's move on to the second module, called Spline Mesh. Here, you'll find three arrays for static mesh elements. In the first array, named Spline Mesh, you need to assign the profile of the future Spline Mesh component. In the Start Mesh and End Mesh arrays, you need to assign the meshes for the beginning and end of the spline. For this example, we'll use a custom railing section as the profile and a railing end mesh. Simply drag and drop the custom meshes into the correct arrays and enable the start mesh and end mesh parameters. As you can see, the railing is distributed along the spline, ending with the designated meshes. Next, let's turn off the road median. If you notice that the ending mesh on the other side of the railing is flipped, you can easily fix this using the Flip Start Mesh option. To determine which spline point is the starting and ending point, temporarily enable the Show Spline Points option in the Snapping settings. If the flipped mesh is at the starting point, disable the flipping option in the settings, and the result will be correct. In this example, we're using a symmetrical mesh. If you have non-symmetrical meshes, you may need to use two different ending meshes. You can also use local offset transforms to adjust the position of the created spline mesh. By duplicating the added module in the array, you can add more elements to further customize your road. Once your spline mesh is set up, making adjustments is easy. Simply drag and drop another custom mesh into the array, and you'll have a custom guardrail. This customization module can be used to create any kind of road feature, like curbs, sidewalks, bridges, or even new road types. The possibilities are only limited by your imagination and project requirements. We encourage you to experiment with these customization modules and their settings to explore all the possibilities available. Now let's talk about customizing the default modules available in the Crossroad Generator. In this updated version 1.2, we have added access to preloaded default meshes, giving you the ability to customize these modules as well. We'll demonstrate this process using a couple of modules, starting with the guardrail module. The guardrail module comes with a few guardrail variations distributed along the spline. Let's replace these preloaded meshes with our custom mesh. Note that you also have the option to replace the ending meshes of the guardrail. First, turn on the end meshes for both the left and right guardrails. Then, disable random distribution and set it to single distribution so that the module uses the first mesh in the array. Now, navigate to the advanced settings of the guardrail module where you can find the preloaded meshes. As mentioned earlier, the first mesh in the array is the one you'll need to replace with your custom mesh. In addition to the meshes, you'll also find the socket names of the module here. We'll need these names in a moment, so be sure to take note of where you can find them. 
Simply drag and drop the mesh you'd like to use, and you should see the results immediately in the editor. Keep in mind that your custom meshes need to have their pivot points placed in the middle of the mesh for the sweep profile and at the edge of the mesh for the ending mesh to ensure exact placement. We recommend reviewing the sample meshes provided in the project for reference. You can apply the same customization process to any other module in the Crossroad generator. For example, you can replace the road curbs with your custom meshes to achieve the desired look, depending on your project's requirements. You also have the ability to customize the road itself by replacing the default road meshes with your custom meshes. Now, let's demonstrate how to customize the road. To do this you'll need a custom road segment or custom road mesh. For this demonstration we'll use a road segment simulating a gravel road surface. This road segment has parallax occlusion mapping applied giving it the appearance of displacement. However, this mapping doesn't work when shadows are cast, so let's turn off shadows for now. Navigate to the road's advanced settings, locate the default road mesh, and replace it with your custom mesh. Make sure you're replacing the correct mesh in the array in this case, a two-lane road. Once replaced, you'll see the concrete road has been replaced by the gravel road. However, the guardrails and curbs may have shifted to the middle of the road. To correct the location of the guardrails and curbs, you need to add custom sockets to your gravel road segment mesh. Navigate to the gravel road mesh settings and add sockets in the socket manager. Ensure the socket names match the socket names of the modules in the advanced settings. In this case, since we're working with the guardrail and curb modules, the socket names should be our guardrail and our curb. The position or offset along the y-axis defines the module's position on the road, so you can adjust this parameter to find the position that works for your custom mesh. After refreshing the road, you'll see that the modules are now placed in the correct positions. Note that if you set the offset to negative values, the mesh will be flipped to the other side. With this approach, you can fully customize your road and the modules attached to it. Thank you for watching this ninth episode of our video tutorial series. To delve deeper into the capabilities of the Crossroad Generator, we encourage you to explore all the tutorials available on our YouTube channel. If you're seeking to elevate your environment and create stunning scenes, the Crossroad Generator for Unreal Engine is an indispensable tool. You can find it on the Unreal Marketplace, and the link is available in the video description. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to render your tail with us.